Hey, thanks for being here. And let's talk about the Fed. They came out with the Fed minutes and they were, I mean, if we go back to the beginning of the year or last year, they were saying, oh, this year they're going to raise the interest rates three to four times. And now they're saying maybe one more time if the economy can handle it. What do you make of this? What, why do you think all of a sudden they're backtracking on how many times they're going to raise the interest rates? Well, because they see that the economy can't handle it. You're already starting to see uh, delinquencies rise. You're seeing uh, home pending home sales has collapsed. I mean, when interest rates go up, that's what we're talking about is an over leveraged uh, to the point of never being this leveraged before economy and financial system and what would they expect with raising rates onto that the the accumulated debt can't be serviced with higher rates do you think they already realize that you know they raised it a couple of times just like they did prior to 2008 where they you know they raised the rates and then all of a sudden they saw the economy break down they said okay now it's time to drop them you think they've raised them to the point where the economy is already breaking down and now they're like okay now we're gonna stop raising them and maybe lower them at this point well lowering them will be a a reflex reaction to the markets imploding uh Yes, they they do see things in the economy beginning to turn, but I think more likely they see things in the financial system really becoming wobbly. I mean, just look all over the world. Uh, the the dollar finally got a bounce from the 88 level. It's trading 93, 94 now. So call that a 5%, 6% bounce. Along with higher rates, the emerging markets are getting killed. I mean, look at uh, look at Argentina. Look at their their uh, they've had to raise rates to 40 percent to defend the currency. Look at the uh, Italian bonds. Italian bonds are collapsing. Just look all over the world and you'll see that a stronger dollar and higher rates is making it extremely difficult to service the debt outstanding. So where does the Fed go now? I mean, if they're not going to raise rates, they're just going to keep it steady. I mean, where does the economy go? Where, where does where does all this go? Well, they came out with a, a somewhat dovish statement uh, yesterday or the day before. And if you look at commodities, commodity prices, X gold, X silver, because those are completely sat on uh, with paper contracts. But if you look at the CRB index, it's it's up uh, 30% from the lows last year and trading back to levels they were in 2015. So commodities have turned up. There's definitely inflation in the pipeline. So for the Fed, uh, they, they're they stuck. They need to raise rates because they need to actually uh, slow inflation down. But they can't raise rates because that's going to implode the debt that's outstanding. And it, it, it goes to the same thing with the dollar. Um, if they continue to raise rates, you're going to have, have the dollar at least bid. And once they, once they turn and start lowering again, which they're going to have to do because we're right back to where we were in 2008 when markets were, were collapsing, were the same exact conditions because after 2008, nothing was fixed. Nothing was addressed. They, they, treated the problem with more of the same. They treated the problem with more debt and more liquidity. And speaking of liquidity, liquidity is becoming t uh, tight across the world. And I mean, you can see that in, uh, especially with short rates, short-term interest rates uh, rising all over the world. You, you can see the tightness on the short end. So you've got a, an over-leveraged global financial system at the same time, liquidity is becoming tight. It's it's a heart attack waiting to happen. I mean, we're talking about the the Fed rate, but we also have the LIBOR rate that continually moves, you know, up, 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 and it has been um, over the last year or so. Aren't derivatives and everything else connected to the LIBOR rate? And if that continually moves up, isn't that going to damage other parts of the economy? Yeah. Exactly. Well, you can't have derivatives blowing up and a a real economy continuing to function because when derivatives blow up, that means the credit markets will also blow up and everything runs on credit. 
And yeah, you're right. Uh, LIBOR has has gone through, I think it's what, two and a half percent or thereabouts now. Yeah. And that's from a, a, a low of, I forget what the low was on LIBOR, but I'm, I'm guessing it was somewhere around 20 basis points. So it's up tenfold. So with LIBOR continually moving up, I mean, I guess the Fed, they can't control it. I mean, it's just moving up on its own. Well, central banks can pump liquidity into the system to, to push it down. But like I said, they're stuck. You've, you've seen the bottom in, in commodities and they've turned higher. So if they, they pump more liquidity into the system to push short term rates down, you're going to get runaway inflation in real goods. But, but the it's, Fed- it's like, it's like the facade is being, being pulled back by reality. The reality of stuff costs more now and they can't, uh, the, the deflationary shock after 2008, 2009 was addressed with massive amounts of liquidity. And those massive amounts of liquidity did not bid up, uh, they supported, but did not really bid up real assets. If they, if they jam liquidity into the system now with real assets already bid, it'll be like a rocket booster. So they've, they've got a problem of rising inflation at the same time where they need to raise interest rates, but they can't do that because they're they're raising rates onto an already over leveraged system. I mean, this is the end game. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it. And, and it's funny because their statement when they said, oh, yeah, we'll raise interest rates if the economy can handle it. Now, haven't they been telling us that the economy has been strong all this time since 2008? It's, you know, we're recovering. Now it's strong. And now they're saying, well, if the economy can handle it, then we'll raise interest rates. So to me, that's that they're, they're trying. What they're saying is that the economy is actually not strong. What do you think? Well, the reality is it's the it's the financial system they're worried about. They're not worried yet to some extent they're worried about the real economy, but they're worried about the financial system. And actually we've had bouts back and forth uh, where they pop up and, and then go quiet. But look at the headlines this morning. Deutsche Bank is, is cutting 10% of their workforce. I would say watch, watch Deutsche Bank because they're probably Lehman Brothers. Do you think that they're going to be the only bank that's going to be laying off uh, people? Because, I mean, right now, I mean, they're saying it's one out of 10 employees that they're laying off. Won't this spread to other banking systems where others have to do the same? Dave, the, the laying off of, of one out of every 10 employees is not going to fix the problem, but it is a symptom. It does show that they're trying to cut expenses trying to cut costs but the bottom line is you're talking about a bank with well over 50 trillion dollars in derivatives when that blows you could you could cut their uh expenses to zero and they're still upside down and the entire financial system worldwide is interconnected just as it was back in in 2008 when you saw the contagion this time around, it's far worse because the the debt that has piled up is far larger. It's probably about double. So the Fed also, and, and you mentioned it just the last couple of minutes here about inflation moving higher. I mean, we do see inflation like in the housing market, in college tuition, in food, certain areas we do see the inflation because those you know prices have just skyrocketed. And the Fed is out there saying that they can control inflation. They want to get it up to a certain percentage, then they'll control it in that area. Do they have the ability to control inflation? No, I got to call bullshit on that. There's There's nothing they can do. I mean, just look at the widespread movement in just commodity prices. I mean, look at gasoline, look at oil, look at lumber. Uh, across the board, commodities are going higher. They've already put the money into the system. The, the hyperinflation has already, uh, happened. The fuel is there to light prices on fire. And the only thing the Fed could do would be to raise rates to who knows, five, six, seven percent. And that that would stop, you know, that would suck enough out of the system to stop inflation. But at the same time, that would completely implode the system. I, I'm surprised the Fed has been able to raise as far as they have without the system coming down. Uh, you know, now they're talking about doing one, maybe two more this year. I'm not even sure they can can get one more in because you just look at the 
Uh, look what's happened this year. There's been a, a big change in markets this year. The last year and a half or so since the election, it was nothing but a steady march upward in equities. Uh, credit was just a little bit weak, but, but everything has gotten choppy. Volatility has exploded and the credit markets have seriously weakened as evidenced by the higher interest rates all across the globe, short end and long end. Uh, and we're actually, we're getting a very, very flat yield curve in the United States and all over the world. The flatness of the yield curve is an indication, uh, as soon as, as soon as you see an inversion of the yield curve, every time the yield curve has inverted, we've had an, a, had a recession afterwards or following that. Uh, we've had recessions without having an in, inverted yield curve, but 100% of the time when the yield curve inverts, we have a recession. And with the amount of debt outstanding, there's no way the financial system can survive a recession. So can this economy be saved at all? I mean, Trump's, you know, he's he talked about bringing back manufacturing. He's talking about, you know, helping the economy. But can this economy be saved at all? Well, yeah, it could be if the debt was not already in place. But because there's so much debt, there's so much personal debt, corporate debt, uh, state debt, municipal debt, federal debt, Debt doesn't go away. Debt has to be serviced. And the answer to your question is is no. The financial system is going to take down Main Street. So when we start to see inflation, I mean, you brought up Argentina. They're seeing inflation. Their currency is devaluing very, very quickly. They needed a bailout from the IMF. Those individuals in Argentina who are holding gold or silver, how did they make out during inflation and the devaluation of the currency? Well, they've maintained their purchasing power. It's it's as simple as that. I mean, and the, another one is uh, Turkey. The the lira is collapsing. Yes. Idea, that's the idea between behind uh, gold and silver. Gold you store your wealth in, and silver you use uh, a tenth of an ounce of, of silver or less to go buy eggs or to buy gasoline or to buy whatever products may be available. But hyperinflation also creates uh, scarcity because you have people hoarding things when they can get it and trying to get rid of the currency as fast as they can. Now, I'm also hearing rumors that it's kind of tough to, to get institutional gold. Are you hearing that also where it's, it's not, I'm not talking about the, you know, the coins and stuff from your local dealer. I'm talking about the, the bars. I'm, I'm hearing that it's, it's a little tough to get the amount that you need. Well, you can see backwardation in London and that shows you that yes, it is difficult. And speaking of London, so far, just this year, uh, COMEX has sent 1.3 billion ounces in EFP contracts over to London to be delivered and roughly 100 million ounces of gold in EFP contracts. That is more than total global production for one year. And they've, they've done that in what, four and a half months. So that's a fraud. I mean, there's just no way London, London can't deliver that. It's, it's a total fraud. Hmm. And we know COMEX can't deliver it. Just look at their inventories. I mean, what do they have? 500,000 ounces of, of gold versus the hundred million ounces that they've, they've transferred over to, to London. So we also see, I mean, we're talking about gold here. I mean, we see that, um, Russia, what, what are they, they become the fifth largest gold holder right now they're continually accumulating gold and so is china china's a little bit tougher to figure out how much gold they actually have but they're continually purchasing gold and when you look at what they've done over time they've duplicated every single thing that we have here out in the west they duplicated the exchanges the payment system the gold exchange they're creating well they have manufacturing they're creating bilateral trades around the world i mean to me it seems like they're ramping up the ability to separate themselves completely from the dollar and go off on their own that's exactly right that's that's exactly what they're doing uh They've put everything in place so that when the U.S. and the U.S. dollar becomes isolated, they can continue to do business without using SWIFT, 
without using any credit from the West, without using dollars, they'll, they'll be able to, to do all their business. And, and look at China since 2013. That's the last five years. They've been going all over the world, uh, doing deals. They've done, they've done raw material deals all over the world where they pay in dollars. So that's been a, a long term strategy of China, uh, locking in business partners to accept dollars. And China gets to offload their dollars. Now, China has also created the petro yuan, which really goes up against the petrodollar. So now, to me, it seems like they've completed everything with the petro yuan. And I think the petro yuan has now 12% of the market since it was issued. And that's only after two months. The first month was 2%. This past month was 12%. Uh, so, I mean, they're all, they're eating into the pie pretty quickly. So do you think many countries, I mean, I know we've heard, you know, Venezuela looking at the petro yuan, Iran might be looking at the petro yuan, especially now with sanctions and things going on with Iran. We know that Russia, definitely Syria, maybe even Egypt. I mean, there there are countries out there, especially the Middle Eastern oil countries, where they might be looking to move towards the petro yuan and away from the dollar. Well, Dave, it's not that they might be. They are. I mean, they they, they are going to use the, the petro you want. They're not going to use the dollar. That's pretty clear. So as more and more of these countries, you know, go full out and use the petro you want, what type of breakdown do we see here in the U.S.? Well, you should see uh, you should see a big drop in the Forex value of the dollar. And I suspect you're going to see uh, some type of event where the dollar reacts with a break of say three to five points. And that will be, that will be your, your, uh, clue that the beginning of the end of the dollar is, has started and it won't take very long from that point to, to totally unwind. Will the markets come down at this point? I mean, will we see like the stock market, you know, start to drop? Yeah. If you look at, at past hyperinflations and that's where we're headed. You generally see equity markets take a, a big hit, uh, 30, 40, 50 percent. And then all of a sudden they stop going down and they start going up for no reason. But there, there is a reason underlying it. It's because people are taking their money out of bonds, taking their money out of banks, and they're putting it into, into stocks because they see it as a productive asset that will give some shelter during hyperinflation. And the rule of thumb during hyperinflations of the past is that holding equities, you only lose about 50% of your purchasing power. Whereas bonds and bank accounts and currency, you basically lose all of your purchasing power. When all of this starts to occur, what does the central bank do at this point? Do you think they'll resort to helicopter money or maybe more QE? Well, yeah. I mean, you're obviously they're going to try QE again. Uh, they might not call it QE, but it's going to be the same thing. They're going to try to flood the system with liquidity. And this time, markets aren't going to react like they did after 2008, 2009, because the central banks will have lost all credibility. So you're basically going to have the world uh, investing and saving population dumping whatever fiats they can and buying real assets, uh, buying stocks. And of course, as I mentioned, that's after the stock market does take a hit and also obviously buying gold and silver because that will be what it's always been, real money, paving and the last man standing as far as currencies are concerned. When this all happens and the central banks trying to, you know, fix it with their money printing and everything else that they do, and people and countries start to lose faith in the central bank because they see what's happening here, do you think at this point countries, the U.S., need to look at what the central banks are actually doing, maybe even audit the central banks? Um, I'm not sure you're, you're going to get a real audit. And it's not just about the central banks. Um, if we could shift gears here just a little bit, it's, it is, and I've said this all along, it's all about confidence. And if you look at what's happened in the U.S. just in the last, call it two weeks, 
an awful lot of truth has begun to leak out. And truth is going to break confidence. When we find out that what we had suspected is fact and how uh, crooked, how much fraud was committed, uh, if you want to call it espionage or whatever, we don't have a rule of law or we did not have a rule of law for the last eight years. And that's going to be, that's going to come out and break confidence. Now, do we have a rule of law going forward? I surely hope we do. Um, and I, I, I believe I said this over this past weekend, uh, on our call that I'm going to give it about another 45 days. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt for 45 days that these lying, thieving bastards in, uh, in Washington and across, you know, all over, we're going to see perp walks. We're going to see arrests. If we don't by, uh, say July, mid July, then my hope is going to wane because from a timing standpoint, it only makes sense that the truth bombs of what's going on in our justice system, it only just, it, it makes sense that 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 information, if it's going to come out, would come out far enough ahead of the election, the midterm elections, to make a difference. I mean, I agree with you. I think a lot of people are becoming impatient with, you know, drain the swamp, and people have been waiting quite a while to see something happen. I mean, we do see things happening in the news, but I don't think it's moving as fast as everybody wants. But the, I, pieces of, the pieces of the puzzle are starting, you're starting to be able to see clearer pieces to the puzzle now. With Trump tweeting and, you know, letting everyone know that he was spied on, um, just like with the FISA warrants, I mean, the corporate media does laugh at him when he comes out with these statements. But they're and, absolute true, truisms. I mean, that's right. absolutely true. It's an absolute abomination that a uh, a sitting president could spy on on any campaign. I mean, that's clear. That's clear that they were trying to rig the election. So you know, you of now we actually have proof of the Obama administration rigging the primary against Bernie, and then trying to rig the uh, election against Trump. And then when Trump won, now they're trying to frame the guy, and it's. It's a, it's totally illegal. It's treason. And there should be thousands of people going to jail for what they've done. And you can see like the corporate media, they're trying to play it down. Comey and Brennan and all the rest are saying, oh, no, this is just normal practice. And this they is- should be in jail. I mean, the names yes. just named. They should all be in jail. They should be in jail. But it seems like it's it's a, a very slow push to get these individuals. Yes, we're pointing, uh, well, they're pointing it out and they're telling everyone to look to see what they've done here. And there's a huge investigation going on. And I see Trump, you know, force the Department of Justice to go ahead and, and push this investigation. I think it's time now to, you know, bring these individuals in and try them. Well, Dave, at the beginning of the year, I, I try to put a title to the year. Last year, 2017, I said was going to be the year of the truth bomb. And this year, at the beginning of the year, I said 2018 is the year that truth will matter. Had uh, Trump come into office and then all of a sudden, within a month or two months, they started making arrests left and right, you would have had a revolution. You would have had people going crazy. But the slow drip of truths that have come out more and more people are able to add those truths together and see and know exactly what's happened. And of course, they've been able to gather more and more evidence. So after a year and a half time, it, it, to me, like there's, there's enough, uh, there's obviously enough evidence, but there's enough evidence for, uh, let's call them the, the marginally average thinker to understand that there's been some some dirty stuff going on. And who wants a Department of Justice, FBI, uh, entire party that tries to rig elections and, you know, what's going on? So moving forward here, you're saying you're giving it, what, 45 days? Yeah, call it into, into July. I think uh, 
I mean, I'm still, what I'm saying is I'm still hopeful that we're going to see perp walks. We're going to see a rally by August 1st and especially by September 1st. It's too close to the election. It, it's too close to the uh, November election. The Democrats will start screaming, oh, well, they're just doing this to steal the election. They've got to have enough time for the Democrats to say, oh, the Republicans are just trying to steal the election. And there's got to be enough time after that for the proof to come out to show how dirty these people have been. And it goes all the way to the top to our past uh, fake, fraudulent, illegal President Hussein Obama. And, you know, I, I wrote about this. I, I didn't put it out public. Um, I just think it's laughable that here we are, uh, 300 million people. We watched on 9-11 when supposedly a bunch of Arabs flew planes into buildings and laws were actually the Patriot Act had, had already been written up. It was just ready to put into place. So for years after that, we gave up our rights one after another. And the, the, the biggest, uh, joke was for the population that willingly gave up their rights would then elect a non natural born citizen who is a Muslim. Do you see the irony there? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's in your face from the elites. Do you think the proof that, um, he is not a natural born? I know, um, Sheriff, what is it, Sheriff Arpeo? He, he was investigating this and there's many different, uh, documents that he has to show that the birth certificate was, uh, falsified. Um, do you think that truth would ever come out? One could only hope. If it does come out that it was falsified and he wasn't a natural born citizen, what do they do at that point? That's a massive constitutional crisis because every time he signed his name it is null and void. And, you know, I don't think uh, it's just that. There's so many things, so many Ill illegal things that happened during the Obama administration that I think that will be assuming that there are perp walks, arrests, assuming this thing goes forward. They're going to dig up all sorts of stuff that happened as far back as 2009, 10, 11 uh, throughout the entire administration. So. Yeah, that would be an interesting piece of news um, that they they prove. I, I think there's already enough proof to show that he's not. I mean, I'm convinced in my mind that he is not a natural born U.S. citizen. But that's not the core of of what I hope comes out. What, what are you looking for? What, what are you looking for to come out? Think of just think of how how dirty everything is. Go back to Scalia was Scalia supposedly died. A Supreme Court justice and they don't do an autopsy. I mean, that's absurd. And the, I mean, the, uh, tarmac meeting between, uh, Bill Clinton and Lynch. I mean, there's just, there are just so, there's too much of a list to even name, but there's so much dirt in the FBI, in the CIA, in the DOJ, the White House, you name it. I mean, think about Obamacare. The guy who, who wrote Obamacare. Uh, what was it a year or two years after it was passed made the comment? Yeah, well, it was, it was meant to fail. And the, the article that I wrote for subscribers was titled, nobody could be this stupid. And what I was getting at is we've been purposely run in a ditch. This is, there's no way, uh, a, a little kid that gets an allowance each week understands that they can't spend more than what their allowance is. But we have adults that have, have run deficits every year since 1960. This country has been purposely run into a ditch by the elites because they wanted to bring forth a new world order, but they couldn't do that with the American population standing in their way. So how best to, to get rid of the United States as an obstacle? Bankrupt it. And that's what they've done. They've bankrupted this country financially, morally, socially, every way Every way possible. Can the country be saved now? Uh, I, I think it's got to be torn down before you can build it back up again. I, I don't think you can turn it around without, uh, without tearing it down. So you mean imploding the economic system, imploding? Yeah, you, you've got to. Resetting everything. Right. Yeah, that's the word, reset. You've got to reset everything.
you got to wipe everything out, wipe everything clean, and then go forward with a true, real rule of law that pertains to everyone, not just the top.